At Celebrating Act Two, John Cohn and I speak to some of the most interesting people in the world. And among the most interesting of those most interesting is Bill Jordan, our philosopher, yeah, our philosopher, talked, a resident a philosopher. Of, we've talked to a lot of interesting people, and sometimes we talk to Bill. Well, that too. <laughs> Another way of saying it. Hey, Bill, uh, we're all friends on Facebook as well as on Celebrating Act Two. And um, we follow each other. And I noticed recently that you were uh, celebrating the life of a friend, a really good friend, long-term friend who passed yes. away yes. recently. And I was very taken not only with the sentiment, but it made me think about our age, my age, and how this is part of life. Um, we're going to lose people we love. Hey, man, you know, time is undefeated. Time is undefeated, and nobody beating it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, a friend for uh, actually, he is his brother and I were friends first, probably in fourth grade, and then hanging out at his house. His older brother was there, and uh, and so we got to where we'd all you know play tennis together, or go fishing together. When uh, when my friend Ronnie went off to college, and I had already gone, at, I had been a year, and I was home on the weekends from a job I had. And, uh, in radio, my first job, but I'd come home on the weekend. And so with Chuck, the older brother, he and I would play tennis all the time, still fish. Uh, we all played golf together. Um, Chuck was diagnosed with diabetes years ago, and he has had numerous struggles because of the diabetes, loss of vision. You know, you run into circulatory problems. They were taking parts of his feet off. And I mean, it was it was sad. But he, he always kept a phenomenal attitude. He was a brilliant guy. He was a middle school civics teacher, a real history buff. Uh, he taught for close to 40 years before he had to take disability. And then just things got really bad here over the last uh, few few weeks of his or few months of his life. <clears throat> and I got the word that he had passed. So went up to Virginia to uh, to pay my respects to the family and see them and some old friends and stuff. And you know, that just happens. The older we get, the more that is going to happen. I've lost coworkers in, in a variety of ways. I mean, even some, sadly, who have taken their own lives over, over you know, whatever reason, a turn in the economy or whatever it might be. Um, it, it's a tough thing, but it is something that is guaranteed to happen. And then when you go to the funeral, and I don't know if it's a normal thing, if you guys do this, you know, and it's not a scorecard, don't don't get me wrong, but you look around and you go, okay, there's 100 and 150 people here. How many people will be at mine? Yeah. And what kind of memories am I leaving people? What stories will they tell about me? You know, Yogi Berra, on a lighter note, Yogi Berra used to, used to say uh, something like, uh, always go to somebody else's funeral, otherwise they may not come to yours. <laughs> um, so anyway, with the celebration of life, there was a lot of laughter. There was just a lot of laughter and just great, great stories. Um, so, but I drove uh, back from Virginia and it takes me about three and a half hours. The first hour and a half, I, it was unlike from unlike me, uh, I just drove in silence. No music, no talk radio, just silence and just let my, let my memories play, you know, and yeah. uh, thankful that I have them and thankful that uh, he was a great friend. Uh, my life is better for having known him and truly a friend like a brother to the point of where I feel guilty that I wasn't more in touch with him in his final days. Um, but truly a friend like a brother. I mean, I was around yeah. him all the time and we just uh, connected on that kind of level so much you, in common. You know, yeah. you uh, you touched a, a, a base with me. It's, it's tough to keep in touch sometimes. It doesn't mean you don't love them. Right. Doesn't mean you're not thinking of them. Right. You just, right. for some reason, we just don't always keep in touch. And right. It's, and it's a shame, it, but it happens. And, yeah, and, and the and, wonderful and, thing, Bill, is that you celebrated his life, the best memories you've shared together. That's what yeah. life is about. Yep. And, yeah, and leaving and those great memories, you know, leaving a positive some, impact on people. Yeah. Yeah. Out there, uh, I lost uh, two uh, uh, close people close to me. Uh, I want a family member and one, uh, my best friend in, in, in college. So we've known each other for 50 some odd years. And uh, uh, since I moved to the uh, West Coast, some close to 40 years ago, I guess, by now, 
uh, Barry and I used to be in touch maybe once or twice a year. But it was the kind of friend you pick up the phone and you just continue the conversation as if no time is. And we've discussed yep, this yeah. before, and I know that that yep. both of you guys have friends like that. And, and and I knew that the last time I saw him was about ten or fifteen years ago, when uh, my wife and I had dinner with he and uh, somebody. I remember the conversation. He says, "Or oh, the third time he he came back to the the table for dinner, having gone to the bathroom, he says." You, you don't, you're still a camel. You don't have to get up anymore. So he was talking about prostate issues by then. Uh, and then he had a number of health issues, but we spoke uh, every six months. And uh, he and his uh, uh, first wife and, uh, uh, were good friends of ours. And in fact, we're still in touch with her. And they were sort of, you know, if not amicable, they, they, they got together with the grandkids and everything else. So, but here's a guy that, that uh, every day of my senior year, the last summer, we would get together and he would sleep over my house because my parents were on some kind of expedition or something. And uh, at the end of the summer, we had to clean up all the White Castle boxes that were, if anybody from the <laughs> East Coast, because that's what we had for dinner every night. We'd both get a sack full of White Castles. Uh, and then, um, so uh, Barry was, uh, it was sad, but he was ill in his last few years. So it was yeah. somewhat of a blessing, but also, and as uh, John particularly knows, uh, I have a cousin who uh, I knew for longer than, than Barry, who uh, is a, a neighbor in the last 15, 20 years. And we grew up in the same house. My family owned a house and they rented the second floor. And so we grew up in the same house. So we were almost like brothers. Uh, and uh, for the last 20 years, we used to get together every Saturday morning, just about, for, literally for 20 years, and play backgammon. Yeah. That was our routine. And we would just shoot, yeah. the, shoot the stuff and um, talk about he had like 11 grandkids. I have a mere four. Uh, but yeah, we were always talking about things in our lives. So it was really fun. Uh, but my my philosophy, though, unlike yours, is I'm not a Yogi Berra. I plan on only having family members and grandkids available because I have a sister planning my 100th birthday party. It's a ways off. But I plan right. on being at everybody else's. OK, and right. only immediate family will miss me because I won't count anybody else. So that's that's right. my plan. Yogi Berra, don't worry about it. Right. Well, I'd like to share uh, a piece with you. I used to actually read this when I was on the air. Um, and this has really brought me a lot of comfort. And I post this on anniversary of my mom's death or my dad's death. Um, there are times that I miss my dad uh, crushingly so. Um, uh, give me one second. I'm fighting a cold here, gentlemen. Um, it's a hazard. Uh, anyway, this is a this is a piece by Henry Scott Holland. I'm told it's a poem, but it doesn't rhyme. So you know, uh, <laughs> that's the way I was. You know, if it doesn't rhyme, it's not a poem. But it's a tribute to those who have passed. Let's see if I can get through this. <clears throat> Death is nothing at all. I have only slipped away to the next room. I am I and you are you. Whatever we were to each other, that we still are. Call me by my old familiar name. Speak to me in the easy way which you always used. Put no difference into your tone. Wear no forced air of solemnity or sorrow. Laugh as we always laughed at the little jokes we enjoyed together. Play, smile, think of me, pray for me. Let my name be ever the household word that it always was. Let it be spoken without effect, without the trace of a shadow on it. Life means all that it ever meant. It is the same that it ever was. There is absolute unbroken continuity. Why should I be out of mind because I am out of sight? I am but waiting for you for an interval, somewhere very near, just around the corner, all is well. Amen. Yeah. Amen. To that, and I'll, thank you, thank you for sharing that uh, with us. And we all, we will all, will be losing friends, or some friends will be losing us at some point. And yeah. like you say, it's a part of life, but it's a sad, but yet reaffirming that we had these wonderful relationships. So thank you for sharing that with us. Yep, absolutely, guys. Thanks for having me back. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.